Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia, let's talk books, and today I have a haul, and this is um, a special haul because even though I am filming and this video will go up before my birthday, um, it is um, for the past month and a half or so, I've kind of been like, oh, this is my birthday gift to myself. So this is basically my birthday haul with the exception of one book that hasn't arrived yet and I'll just talk about it at the end. Uh, but um, you'll see I have a couple of projects in mind uh, when I ordered books. Uh, a lot of these books are Latinx books and yeah, let's just get right to it. The first one that I have right on top of my pile is Furia by um, Yamil Said Mendez, and this is a story of a young girl in Argentina who wants to play soccer. Um, I think there are going to be roadblocks in her way, and it's all about how she fights through the roadblocks um, to uh, play soccer. And I, this looks really great. I'm a huge soccer fan. Um, as a fan of the Mexican national team, I do not approve of the Argentinian national team. If you're familiar with um, soccer rivalries, you'll know why. But um, I'm still really excited seeing a Latinx um, character playing soccer and, and reading about soccer in a Latinx community. I'm really excited about it. So that is one. Um, another book that is also part of my Latinx haul is Never Look Back by Lilian Rivera. I purchased, did I purchase? No, I read one of um, Lilian Rivera's books and found it really, really great. Um, so I believe this is a retelling or of the Orpheus myth. I think that's how it's being sold. Um, Yuri comes to the Bronx as a girl haunted, haunted by losing everything in Hurricane Maria and by an evil spirit. Uh, Theus is a golden voice, but Chata singing charmer, ready to spend the summer on the beach with his friends. That's all I need to read. This this looks good. I really like Lidia Rivera's writing, and I saw an interview that um, she did online. Um, I'll link it uh, because um, it's it was with Paola, who organizes a bunch of different Latinx uh, kind of things on BookTube and YouTube, and so I'll I'll leave all her information down below. But um, this one looks good. A book I'm super excited about is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This is a queer transgender story featuring a lot of like spooky themes here. Obviously Cemetery um, Boys right there. Um, I, know, I don't know too much more about it and I have avoided reading all the wonderful reviews people have done of it uh, because I want to read it and then review it. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, I know lots of people have been reviewing um, this in the Latinx spaces on booktube and um, so um, it was really great and it was really great to see that this made all the bestseller list because it is a Latinx book, because it is a queer book, but especially because it is a book about a transgender main character. I, like it's just, it is just something to be celebrated because now publishers will know that these kinds of stories, these kinds of themes sell. All right, um, a couple of, a few nonfiction books that I purchased. I finally purchased Reimagining Liberation, A Black Woman Transformed Citizenship in the French Empire by Annette K. Joseph Gabriel. So this is all about black women in the uh, Francophone world in the French Empire. Um, and um, it's one that I've been looking forward to for a while and it finally went down in price. So I like hit purchase right away and using the excuse that my birthday was coming up. But I'm really excited uh, to read this one. I, I've been hearing really good things about it. Another book that was part of my nonfiction haul is Mother is a Verb by Sarah Knott, an unconventional history. So this is actually a history of like motherhood and but it's it's got a narrative style to it that's not typical of nonfiction history books and I'm really excited to read this. Um, Priscilla over at Bookie Charm read it a while back. I saw her review on Goodreads. Um, and um, she had good things to say about it, and so I'm I'm really excited to get to this. Maybe for nonfiction November, like some of these books, I think would be great for nonfiction November. One that's definitely good for nonfiction November is *The Cigarette: A Political History* by Sarah Mylov. So this is all a history of the cigarette, um, and I actually first found out about this book because there was a bit of a controversy. Two male historians went on a podcast 
to talk about the history of the cigarette and they basically used all the material all the research that this author um, wrote about in this book and published and they didn't credit her like they were legit taking her research and sharing it on the podcast they didn't credit her on air they didn't credit her after the, like you know like on, on any of the podcast information and it was really unfair because this is the historian who has written it it is a female historian she's an early career historian and so uh, it really spoke to the power dynamics of the academia that these two uh, kind of older male historians more established in the field where it was just go on a podcast and use information from a different historian without giving her credit for it um and so i've been wanting to read this book for for quite a while um the the history here also looks really fascinating um and um it finally went down in price and so i was able to buy it all right let's i'm gonna skip skip around a little bit because um i have been choosing quite a few books from book of the month i I had a subscription. I bought a year subscription to them right before they went all racist on Instagram. And then I decided to support, to, to, to keep that membership because they wouldn't give me my money back. And for a few months, they've been doing really well at featuring books written by non-white authors. And so, um, I, I'm, I still think well, that once my subscription, once I use up all my credits, so that I will not be renewing any subscription with them, but um, we'll see. Uh, one of the first books that I got from Book of the Month was Transcendent Kingdom by Ja Giassi, and I loved Homegoing. Homegoing was um, their debut, debut, and this, so I had to get this one because I loved Homegoing so much, and it looks like it is a about a... Uh, six-year PhD candidate in neuroscience at Stanford University School of Medicine um, and uh, it's about a family of immigrants ravaged by depression and addiction and grief uh, it, anyways I was just gonna read it because of the author because I loved their work so much beforehand uh, I did get a copy with the dreaded sticker from the read with Jenna uh, I did not know the stickers were a thing until I was watching an Instagram um, with Dee Dee and Venna and they were talking about these and I was like no I, I hoped mine was not gonna come with it but it did and what are you gonna do the British edition by the way if you want a copy of Transcendent Kingdom without the stickers that come with it and the American edition uh, the British edition looks really gorgeous beautiful I'll put it up here so you all can see it um, and you just have to wait a little bit to to get the British edition I also decided to get uh, the latest Ruth Ware book, One by One. It looks like this is kind of like an, what Mara over at Books Like Woke calls an isolated close circle mystery story. I love those kinds of um, mysteries and um, I've only read one Ruth Ware book before I liked it and so I, since I've got credits to use up with Book of the Month, I decided I would give this one a try. One book that I was super excited to get from Book of the Month was Winter Counts by David Heska Wombly Waden. This is a native author writing an own voice story. It's, it looks like it's a mystery horror story set, set in a reservation. Uh, and that's all I really want to know about this book. I With these kinds of stories, I don't want to know more about them. But um, I hope it's good. <laughs> In my latest uh, Book of the Month order, I got Ties That Together by Jane E. Haro. So this is a romance novel, and I don't know too much about it um, other than the premise looked good on Book of the Month, and it was romance, and I was like, let's go with it. I loved the, the colors of the cover and all that. I, like, I'm being honest, I made some superficial decisions here, but it says, at 12 years old, Asir promised her dying father she would marry a Nigerian man and preserve her culture. Even after immigrating to Canada, her mother has been vigilant about helping while forcing her to stay with the Nigerian dating pool ever since. But when another match made by mom goes wrong, Asir ends up at a bar enjoying the company and later sharing the bed of Rafael Castellano, a man who is tall, handsome, and white. <laughs> we'll see. 
to romance novels, so we'll see. Uh, two books that I got here. Um, <laughs> this is where I was like, the recent book of the month pigs were like, oh no, are you, are you going back to your old ways? I still got these, but I got The Invisible Life of, of Addie LaRue by V. Schwab. So uh, just because it's a V. Schwab book and it's a big bestseller and, you know, getting up in Book of the Month is a bit of a deal on that. So we'll see how I do with that one. I also got A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Now, <laughs> there's been some issues with this book lately because some there's a racist, a very racist paragraph in here in which the the wearing of dreadlocks is used as a metaphor for bad things. So it's, it's very racist. Um, that's the main criticism I've heard of the book. Uh, there's other criticisms about native peoples, I believe. Um, I have to look more into what people, own voices reviewers are saying about that. But this is one of those issues where, like, if they had had readers, sensitivity readers, own voices readers, review this book beforehand, they could have saved themselves a ton of trouble. They could, could have fixed the issues of the book before, like, there was a big backlash against it. Um, Naomi Novik has come out and apologized. I don't know if the apology is sufficient enough, and I'm not who she should be apologizing to anyway, so I, you know, I'll leave that for others um, to say. Um, this book, I had already picked it from Book of the Month. It was already on the way when I heard about what was happening with it. So we'll see. My policy when things like this happen has been to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Depending on what the um, transgression is within this book or, or that an author has done, I decide whether it is bad enough for me to um, not read the book, not support the book and the author, or I decide that it is that I will still support the book and the author with Novik. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do um, with it. I need to, like I said, see what other um, own voices, reviewers are saying about the book and then make a decision, um, see how Novik and the publisher are responding and um, go from there. Lately, I've had more of the policy of like, listen, <laughs> you're gonna be explicitly racist in a book and you know, and the book has gone through the entire publishing process and nobody has caught it that speaks to the larger problem of racism within publishing and I tend I, I'm tending to not even give those books a chance um, especially if they weren't on my radar I wasn't interested in them before because there's so many good books out there why am I gonna spend time on something that I know is already going to be racist uh, like I said, with the exception of like, if I place the book, if I don't find out about the issues with the book or an author um, before I make a purchase, then that's where like, I feel I'm in a gray area. Okay, moving on from there, a couple of books that I'm super excited about are uh, When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. I love Alyssa Cole's romances, and this is a thriller uh, with themes of um, gentrification, and I'm really excited to see how she does in a different genre. I also got the third book in the Brooklyn Bruja series. This is Wayward Witch by Soraya Cordova. I only read the first one, um, and then the second one, I have them all in paperback, so I got the third one in paperback, but I, I just enjoy Soraya Cordova's writing and her stories, uh, Latinx Brujas. I am there for all of this, so um, I'm looking forward to reading this one. And then am I there? I'm almost there with a special project. You'll, you'll be able to tell what it's about, but I also, Given using the excuse of my birthday, got La Guaracha del Macho Camacho. This is um, by Luis Rafael Sanchez. This is a Puerto Rican story that I've heard Alba over at her channel name is Seriela. I'll link her down below as well. Talk about this. She in particular recommended this edition of it because it comes with a lot of the historical background and explanation. I did get it in Spanish. I wanted to read it version of it in Spanish and um, I'll see I'll, I'll let you know what I think about it um, but so this is a like classic of Puerto Rican literature so I'll let you know how it goes and then uh, my you've already seen me haul books that talk about some of the issues that are coming up here but these are all books that I purchased in Spanish the first one is um, Gonzalez e Hija Una Novela a novel by Maria Amparo Escandalo Sorry, it's 
by Maria Amparo Escandón. And this is a story that um, is not about but features discussions of 1968 in Mexico. I'm very interested in it. Academic Mommy, that is her Instagram handle, um, wrote her dissertation on the like memory of Mexico 68. And um, she, this is one of the books that she wrote about in her dissertation, so I really wanted to read it. And the rest of these books were also purchased at her recommendation. Uh, this one is Roberto Bolaño Amuleto. So again, I got it because it this one engages directly with the massacre of students that happened in Mexico in 1968. It was in the lead up to the Olympics in Mexico. The Mexican government was trying to repress any and all dissent and because this was their chance to exhibit Mexico to the world and to appear uh, like, you know, they could that, make a good impression on the world, uh, is how I put it. And as a result, they massacred a bunch of students and, and families. Uh, that were protesting the government and the inequality in the government. Um, I also purchased El Otoño Mexicano de la Masacre de Tlatelolco by Paco Ignacio Taibo Segundo. So another one, 68, this is a first-hand account by somebody who was in the Plaza of Tlatelolco. This is a plaza in the center of Mexico City. I've been to it um, at, when I was there. I was there as a, as a teenager and didn't know the full history of it, but this is a very famous plaza and this is where the massacre occurred. Um, so uh, this firsthand account, um, well, I'll tell you more when I do. I'm gonna do a whole video on the history of 1968 in Mexico. Um, it is a personal research and teaching topic for me. I love teaching about the year 1968 in a global context. When I teach it, I always talk about the student protest in Paris, the way that France just kind of shut down because of these protests. I also like to talk about Czechoslovakia and the, um, Czechoslovakia was the name at the time, the invasion of Czechoslovakia by the Soviet Union and the way that young people were massacred by Soviet tanks and the way that played out on a global um, scale. Uh, there were student protests in, um, in Germany, in Ireland, in China. In the U.S. was an election year at the Democratic National Convention, which was held in Chicago at the time. There was a ton of violence. It was there's a lot going on that year. It's a really important year. I think it's a year in which it has a lot to say to us now, and I think we have a lot to say back to the generation that's still alive of 1968 and the um, kind of political movement that they built. Uh, another book that also engages with uh, the topic of Mexico 1968 is Los Años con Laura Diaz by Carlos Fuentes. Uh, this is a chunker of a novel, uh, but it, it's in Spanish. So these last few books about 1968 is all in Spanish. It was really important to me to read them in Spanish, even though some of them have um, English editions of them, because um, I'm trying to read more in Spanish as a way of keeping not losing some of the Spanish Spanish is my first language so I doubt I will ever fully lose it but where you're immersed and talking and thinking in English it you do start losing even your native tongue and so this is a part of my effort to read more in Spanish a couple of other books I've forgotten about um, that just came in are uh, the Book of Echoes by um, Rosana Amaka. This is a book that engages the themes of slavery. Um, and um, Dee Dee um, over at Brown Girl Reading I chose it for the Read So Lit um, kind of read along that she does uh, to, in celebration of Black History Month in the UK. Um, I'll be reading this in the uh, next week. So it's, I will probably have a review up of this really soon. Um, and also a book that was highly recommended by historians that I admire was Body and Soul, The Black Panther Party and the Fight Against Medical Discrimination by Alondra Nelson. Um, again, I think there's a resurgence in interest uh, in the Black Panther Party and Black organizing and Black activism. And to me, like understanding the history of it is really important because for some people it might feel like this is happening out of nowhere and it never is. It just never is. This book in particular seems to um, bring together discussions that I am extremely interested in, right? The Black Panther Party and their community organizing along with medical discrimination, which is a one of my research areas. So uh, I, again, this came 
highly recommended by um, historians and uh, I am looking forward to reading it and, and um, then discussing it with you all. One last book that is on its way, I just ordered from the publisher because they were having a sale, was Hearing Happiness. I follow the author on Twitter. She is magnificent. She is a huge disabilities advocate and um, seems like has written this fantastic book. Um, I love the color yellow in the cover. And um, yeah, uh, there is, um, it's Disability Awareness Month. And um, I knew I was going to get this book even before I knew it was Disability Awareness Month. Uh, but the fact that there was a kind of convergence of, of, of the book becoming available and on sale and it being Disability Awareness Month kind of uh, pushed me over the edge to, to just go ahead and buy this now. Um, and I'm looking forward to, um, again, chatting about it with all of you. And um, it's a lot of books, a lot of reading that I'm giving myself. But I'm also reading a lot this year. I've already read over 100 books and so I don't feel like I am over I mean I'm over buying a little bit but I feel like my reading does justify the kind of book buying that I that I do I bought a few other books on ebook um, kind of a lot of Latinx um, in books are written in different genres that I will will be coming up um, on the channel I might do a separate um, haul video for those I'm not sure quite yet but now I can put these all away. <laughs> Thank you for sticking, um, sticking to the end, for watching um, my videos, for supporting my channel. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate every single person that subscribes to the channel and is interested in watching my videos, that comments on these videos. I just don't know how uh, to express my thanks um, because I feel like words are often not enough. Uh, but thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.